Good morning, I'm Roland Martin, and right now on News 1 Now, the governor of Missouri appoints a 16-person commission to deal with social issues as Ferguson awaits a grand jury decision. Too little, too late? I'll pound, but break it down. Banking and lending corporations won't be doing business in Chicago unless they change their racist ways, says a couple of aldermen. We'll talk with Alderman Walter Burnett about that. Also, allegations of rape against Bill Cosby. Many are demanding that he come out and speak to the issues, but should he? We'll talk about that with our panel as well. Plus, we hear from WNBA legend Lisa Leslie, who says she can throw down in the kitchen uh, better than she could throw down on the basketball court. Yeah, we'll see. All that more coming up right now on News 1 Now on TV One. As the nation awaits the grand jury's ruling in Ferguson regarding the killing of Mike Brown by Officer Darren Wilson, a new commission designed to help the social issues raised by his death has been sworn in by Governor Jay Nixon. The 16-person commission consists of business, religious, and community leaders who were chosen by the governor from a pool of more than 300 people. Let us heal the divisions exposed by the death of Michael Brown and use this defining moment as the moment we begin to walk a different path. We are a diverse and qualified commission, and I'm honored to be a member because we're going to listen respectfully and collaboratively and thoughtfully to each other and to our community. Is this Governor Jay Nixon trying to save his butt? Let's go to our panel. We have Lauren Victoria Burke, Managing Editor of Politic365.com, Cleo Monago, Political Consultant and Black Behavioral Health Strategist, and Kim Brown, host of DMV's Spotlight. All right, folks, um, this, is, this, this sounds to me very much like the Kerner Commission, 1968, with the riots that took place in 67 and 68. President Lyndon Baines Johnson appoints the Kerner Commission. Uh, to examine the riots and what they concluded that there were two Americas, one black, one white. They also talked about in that particular uh, report uh, that the media played a critical role as well because they said you virtually had no black folks who were uh, on television. That pretty much, that also led to a lot of the changes in media as well. Do you see this particular commission serving the same purpose and uh, it really being honest? You heard uh, one of the members say, we're going to listen really being honest about racial issues, not just in Ferguson, but also in Missouri. Unlikely, I think that, I mean, first of all, we already know a lot about Ferguson. A town of 21,000 people, and they've handed out something like 35,000 fines for nonviolent, usually driving offenses, and collected something like two or three million dollars a year from that town, which is the second highest source of revenue for Ferguson, just fines. I'm not sure you need a commission to discuss that. If you read some of the stories in the press about what is going on in Ferguson with regard to statistics and stops and uh, so forth with law enforcement, I'm not sure you need a conversation another conversation on that. I mean, we've already heard these things for years, so I think the commission is effectively a PR attempt. Yesterday, we had Senator Claire McCaskill here in Missouri uh, on the show talking about uh, what's taking place there, and she talked about some policy issues that need to be addressed uh, in the city and in the state as well. Uh, so, Cleon, Kim, your thoughts on this? Well, at the risk of sounding cynical and having been to Ferguson, spent a whole week there a few weeks ago and saw what for myself what's going on there, much of which has not made the press, I personally think that this move is, a, is an appeasement, similar to the um, letting go of one of the captains or something that previously happened because of concern about what might be coming up, because even they even had have getting prepared for some military protection of somebody there because of what might happen when they announce the uh, grand jury outcome. And I think that they're doing what they can to appease people and keep them calm because we might not like what we're getting ready to hear. So if, if indeed this commission is supposed to have some relevance, they should have somebody who has mental health mental health skills on this commission because there's some serious mental health challenges happening on both ends of the spectrum in Ferguson. Well, I, I'm inclined to agree with Cleo. I think this is a 
a way to sort of placate the community. This is a band-aid. This is not a permanent solution to the issues that are happening in Ferguson. It's a 16-person commission, I believe made up of nine blacks and seven whites. Some of the protesters' reaction to the people that have been appointed to the commission have been favorable. Uh, they like some of the people that have been uh, uh, appointed and sworn in on uh, Governor Nixon's new, new endeavor to try to quell things in Ferguson, but the state of Missouri has been running information about policing and disproportionate policing and how racial profiling in that state for at least the past 10 years is widely uh, skewed with African Americans being charged and arrested and profiled at much larger rates than white Missourians. However, when you talk about Senator Claire McCaskill and Democrat Governor Jay Nixon, these are the people that really need to be concerned because these uh, the black community is traditionally the democratic base and in my opinion I think some people in Ferguson would be inclined to agree they're not seeing the proper political response coming from their elected officials and I hope these people remember this in two years when election day comes back up. Here's why I don't mind the commission. I, I don't mind it because I think part, what often happens is when these things happen it, it's a very short-term response uh, and you don't have a real examination beyond just the case itself. And the reason I say that, I, I look at Trayvon Martin. The reality is uh, Trayvon Martin isn't killed. Do you have the same response to Alec? Do you even know about staying your ground? Uh, because of what took place with Mike Brown, the, the court system, that was happening before Mike Brown was shot and killed. That's true. Uh, but the attention was, was shown on that. I have no issue with the commission because you can do a report. My concern is not the report. My concern is what you do with the report. Yeah, I mean, if there's I no... I mean, that, that's, that's the real issue. Yeah, if there's no action uh, that is connected with the commission, which is usually the case with these commissions, you know, people sit down and have a long conversation, and it's all very interesting. But if there's no binding action after it, no commitment from elected officials, this is a complete waste of time. Michael Brown is just one of many cases like this, police brutality around this country, where there was a conversation after that and nothing actually happened. Yeah, so, uh, and, right, and me, that's what I'm saying, I'm not interested in the... Con the again, if, if the commission listens, if you have the conversation, if they come up with suggestions, things along those lines, mm -hmm. then the onus is then going to be on the governor, on the state legislature, to say, okay, here's a problem with, when it comes to inequality, when it comes to issues with your police department, when it comes to hiring or whatever, now what are you going to do now that the commission see, has weighed in? Leaders in Ferguson have already, leaders in Ferguson have already brought this up to the governor and to Claire McCaskill and the mayor, Francis Slay, and everybody else. So I'm a little bit confused about why you would need a commission mm -hmm. to tell these people that. Well, how, how is this different from what the, the DOJ is doing? I mean, we just saw Eric Holder no, in no, no, Ferguson the, uh, not that long after. The, 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 no, I understand what you're saying. This is this is a much more localized type of thing that the governor himself has done. No, 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 no. no. Well, my point is the DOJ, that is a legal arm. That is not, that, that's not what this is. So what DOJ is doing in terms of examining the case is different than what this commission is supposed to be doing. But aren't they still investigating the same type of no, factors? No, 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 The DOJ, that's the legal aspect. No, I understand. This commission is more about... Policy. Uh, well, no, uh, other issues there in Ferguson that goes beyond just the legal aspect of the case. But it's mm. so few community people, I mean grassroots community people involved in this commission. And, 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 and look, and that's what... That, Here's what often happens. What often happens, unfortunately, with these commissions, you, you go for the official folks, business leaders yeah. and uh, established community leaders. Exactly. I always say if you don't have any radicals on it, the commission ain't really that radical. And I always say there's a reason why you don't have any of radicals course. on there because you want to <laughs> do some lip service and paint and do some window dressing gotcha. to appease people and nothing really changes. Hold tight one second. We come back. We're going to talk about the rape allegations against Bill Cosby. Should he speak? Also, is he innocent until proven guilty, or is he to prove his innocence and we assume guilty? Well, our panel will break it down. And we had a hot topic on radio about that as well. Cleo can't wait to discuss that. Also, what's happening when it comes to Chicago? If you come to Chicago and you want to do business with the city, got some black aldermen who said, why don't you hire some black people? We'll break it down for you right here on News One Now on TV One. Minnesota Vikings running back Adrian Peterson's season is over. Yesterday, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell suspended him without pay for at least the remainder of the 2014 season after he pleaded no contest to hitting his four-year-old son. The commissioner says Peterson has shown, quote, no meaningful remorse in injuring his child. 
Goodell also said that Peterson may be reinstated in April if the running back agrees to undergo counseling and treatment. The Players Union plans to appeal the suspension. Well, model and TV host Janice Dickerson is the latest woman to accuse comedian Bill Cosby of rape. Uh, she follows two other women uh, who came out. In fact, there are told of, over the years there have been told of 15 women who said that Bill Cosby has raped them. Some have said that he uh, provided them drinks uh, as well as different pills, and they woke up. Uh, and realize that uh, sex had been uh, had taken place and they were groggy. Let's bring in our panel right now because it's been lots of attention, uh, obviously on social media, also in mainstream media with interviews uh, with women accusing him of that. And also he did an interview on NPR. He was asked about it as well. So we have Lauren Cleo uh, and Kim as well. Here's, here's, what you, here's what you have here. So you have um, in the last several days, you have uh, Barbara Bowman writes a piece in the Washington Post. Uh, CNN, CNN interviews her two or three times. Uh, then there was a woman who was interviewed on CNN on Monday, then again on Tuesday. Uh, and it's interesting to look at how different people are uh, dealing with this story, reporting the story. Uh, and so the, so the question is this here, from a journalistic standpoint, from a media standpoint, is this the question of a court of public opinion issue, a legal issue, because statute of limitations have run out. Mm -hmm. uh, the One of the allegations, she says it took place 45 years ago. Right. Another woman says it took place 30 years ago. And so what do you make of what's happening here where this thing really got kick-started because a comedian I, no one had ever heard of uh, made a, uh, a comment during a stand-up routine in Philadelphia that right. goes viral and then it mushrooms from there really over the last three weeks. Well, these stories are always to some extent about the court of public opinion. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is whether it's journalistic or social or a public opinion or not, he's not saying anything. I mean, for him to sit there on NPR and not deny these things after you got four or five people coming out, is pretty, to me, indicting. I mean, if you haven't done anything, you're innocent. Innocent people typically say, hey, I didn't do it. Didn't he's not doing that. So that, for me, is kind of a deal breaker. You typically don't get five or six people who lie in exactly the same way about something this serious. I don't care how long ago it was or any, you know, people make this, this, have this idea that, oh, it happened 20, 30 years ago, so it doesn't matter. I think it does matter. I actually. was reading this story in the rap doc, on the rap.com, and one of the things that, it, the story was with uh, various crisis PR folks. Uh, and it was, the, the consensus was, don't talk. The consensus was that he could talk, and then it's gonna be talk tomorrow, then the next day. Then the next day, a lawyer say the same thing. Uh, is that a smart strategy not to talk, not to give interviews about this particular now issue? Now when it comes to having been accused of rape, that's not going to go away. I mean, Michael Jackson learned that as well when he was alive. I mean, when you got, are accused of something as heinous as rape, which is a horrific crime, even though he hasn't dealt with it because of the statute of limitations, but it's still very, very stigmatizing. He has to say something, and like she said, that he has not said anything at all looks more suspicious than him following a, a, an attorney's advice. On Sunday, uh, the uh, attorney released a statement uh, denying the uh, allegations, uh, and so he had spoken through his attorney. Right, but Kim, he, I'm sorry. Well, no, I, I think that it's a smart short-term solution to do the no comment thing. I think it is irreparably harmful to Bill Cosby and his reputation as he goes forward. He's 77 years old. He has had a very long and revered career in entertainment and been very prominent in the black community. However, the fact that there's no statute of limitation on rape is actually part of the problem. If, they, if it was still, if these allegations were still able to be made and be made in a court of law, I think the public would probably get the answers that they're looking for. I, which would still be difficult because if someone, if someone says, or somebody took place 30, 45 years ago, now you're dealing with an evidence issue. Now you're dealing, I mean, because so it's, you, you still are in a situation where, whether it's a court of public opinion or even law, one person's word, uh, word I guess another person's word, versus if you talk about a murder case where you have oh, evidence, body. you have right. tire tracks, right. you we have... Know, we don't know that, what evidence is available and what evidence is not and available. And, and I know that there's no statute it's a limitation yeah. on trauma that rape victims endure. And I applaud these women for telling their stories very publicly because, number one, that takes a lot of courage to do that, especially given the ginormous person that Bill Cosby is mm -hmm. in, in the public sphere. But also, if you're Bill Cosby, you don't care about any of that. You don't care about the statute of limitations if you're innocent. You don't care about what your attorneys are saying if you're innocent or your PR people. If you're innocent, you come out and say, I'm innocent. 
Well, I don't that, care about that's any That's a of hypothesis. That. We don't know what people do now that we're in their shoes. But what's yeah, difficult, yeah, but he's though, pressed, is for... He's getting press either way, whether he comes out and says he's innocent or not. Right? He's going to be in the press. Well, the story's true. in the press either way. That's true. So my but, thing but again, is, though, if but, you're but, innocent, you come out and But here's what's that. interesting, though. When you look at, um, uh, in fact, the, the rap story said, the Hollywood crisis experts to Bill Cosby shut the F up. They were very see, clear. They always so, say that. When don't they say that? Right. When exactly. don't they say that? So, but right. here's a question for, for, the, for you, though. Is it also different when you have high-profile folks? Because typically, uh, we can go from whether it's Bill Cosby, whether it's an athlete, whether right. it's a musician, right. whether it's, hell, whether it's R. Kelly, whether right. it's uh, uh, somebody else. I mean, you look at Stephen Collins. Right. I mean, here, well, see, his, if he was uh, in the uh, hold on a second. Right. Stephen Collins, here his wife uh, records him right. admitting right. to child molestation right. in a deposition. Stephen Collins didn't come out and say a word. Yeah, the thing is, he is not, Bill Cosby is not in the heyday of his career, even though a lot of these incidents seem to have been, seem to have allegedly in happened heyday. in the heyday of his career. But he's in his 70s. All the more hey, reason, all the more reason he should be running to the TV to say he's innocent if he's innocent. So you're talking about people who are in the heyday of their career. That's a slightly different strategy. You're shaking your head. But we're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. And let's be clear, Mr. Cosby has not been criminally charged or found guilty of any of these allegations. Of course and he that hasn't. is the bottom of course he hasn't. line. But why why hasn't he come out and said, media, I haven't done anything? Because that's his prerogative. I mean, he, he, no, he, he's under advice of his attorneys. I don't know. I mean, please, there are people who are guilty of crimes who but, get on television with straight faces and say that they're innocent. So him just saying, I'm innocent, does not necessarily make it so. But when we talk about how this is being perceived and what his and how it's going to sully his reputation and his his legacy going forward, it would behoove him to come out and say something, but I understand why he's Wasn't not Bill saying Cosby anything. Wasn't Bill caught with a woman and had a child out of wedlock? Some time ago, yes. So, well, I won't say caught with a well, woman. Well, I mean he. I mean, is, 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 well, I mean, a woman. Caught, did, uh, well, he's well, married. One is a woman. A woman did come forward, said that uh, that uh, she was uh, his daughter. His daughter. Right. Uh, he has financially supported her. I don't believe that he actually acknowledged. I don't. I don't even know if there was a DNA test. I mean, I'll look it up in a second. Hold on one second. I got to go to a break right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, when we just want to pick up on that point, we come back. Also, we're going to deal with uh, what's happening in Chicago where uh, Chicago aldermen are telling uh, financial firms, y'all don't want to hire black people, y'all gonna have to deal with us and you can do business with the city of Chicago. And we'll talk to uh, Alderman Walter Burnett next. This is News One Now on TV One.